All right, this sweater, it might not be Gucci, but it was sent to me by one of our viewers, 441, I don't know. It's a clothing brand, they're a fan of the show, they hooked me up with their latest, appreciate it, let's get into this video. Hey, what's up here tonight? Hey, what's up? Worry, man. Before Bianca would become the latest muse to fuel rapper Kanye West's many artistic endeavors, not to mention his alleged wife. Well, architect Bianca Sensuri was born on January 5th, 1996 in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia. According to Bianca, Melbourne is the city that cultivated her creativity. Now there she grew up on a leafy street in the inner northeast suburb known as Alphington, where her family resides to this day in a period home with a large backyard in a neighborhood where those that know them have described the family as quiet but always friendly. As a child, Bianca Sensuri, while well, she was often drawn towards creative endeavors and for a long stretch of time, well, she was planning on becoming a sculptor. Then she discovered architecture and fell in love with what she described to Elle magazine as the union of art and pragmatics. It was the greatest artistic gesture that we can place onto the earth. I was drawn to it purely as a shift in artistic scale. Now, Bianca's passion for art was further nurtured by her aunt who continually exposed her to an array of different mediums, be it paintings, film, or architecture. Now it was her aunt that instilled an eye for aesthetics in Bianca as she carried that love with her ever since. Now, as a teenager, Bianca, she attended Melbourne's Cary Baptist Grammar School, which she eventually graduated from in 2012. Now, according to friends, she had at the time, well, back in high school, well, Bianca wasn't exactly the biggest fan of Kanye's music. Now, before joining Yeezy, well, Bianca, she learned all about architecture while studying at the University of Melbourne. Now, being the industrious entrepreneur that she is, well, she also established a jewelry company on the side during this period of time, and it's known as Nylons. Now, Bianca took one year off of school in 2014 to help establish this side business, then returned to university more focused than ever to finish her degree. In 2017, she earned her bachelor's and afterwards, well, she picked up work as a student architect at DP Toscano Architects, a well-established firm based out of Collingwood, recognized for the Duke Apartments, an impressive residential project that Bianca played a role in bringing to life. In 2019, she returned to the University of Melbourne to earn a master's degree in her field, and shortly after doing so, well, she had a job offer waiting for her from none other than and Kanye West. Bianca Sinzuri's former boss at the architecture firm where she worked in Australia, Joe Toscano, well, he remembers being astounded when Bianca told him she was leaving Australia to work for Yeezy. Now, he was also sure that she had what it would take to succeed in the biz. He told the Sydney Morning Herald, she obviously made an impression on Kanye West, and she made that impression because she actually is very talented. Now, according to another source that spoke with Page Six, well, Kanye and Bianca they first met after Ye slid into her DMs on Instagram while she was studying to earn her masters. Now, it's unclear how Kanye heard about Bianca in the first place, but maybe he discovered her personal favorite work, a concept home that she designed through the lens of plasticity, a theoretical architectural style. During her training with Bianca, she designed a home using this concept and then placed it in a rural setting to study its capability of transforming itself by acquiring new natural characteristics over an extended period of time. Now, she was also diving into metal work before she left Melbourne to move to Los Angeles and work for Yeezy in 2020. Now, by all accounts, the romance between Kanye and Bianca it likely began in the confines of the workplace. Now, as the head of architecture, while well, Bianca's exact role in the organization, it's somewhat nebulous. But she described working closely with Kanye and developing a unique Donda language in terms of a specific aesthetic. Um, at Yeezy, we were able to develop the Donda language and aesthetic with Kanye, which is informed both of our design aesthetic. Now, of course, when it comes to Kanye, we all know that his favorite form of expression is music, and in December of 2022, well, the public got its first hint that love might be in the air when he dropped a surprise track titled Sensory Overload. Now, more than just a poorly veiled reference for his fascination with his newest employee, well, the track offers this one particularly noteworthy bar that might be worth reading between the lines of when Ye raps, and the Bible said, I can't have any more sex till marriage. Now, the rest of the song lyrics, they don't seem to point directly to Bianca, but that lyric might explain why less than a month later, well, reports began to circulate that these two, they were indeed already married. The couple first appeared in public together in early January and shortly thereafter, well, Ye was spotted wearing a ring on his wedding finger in Beverly Hills. When tracked down, well, Bianca's family, they claimed to be overjoyed with the news of her wedding with her sister Angelina telling the Herald Sun, it's very exciting news for both my sister and the family, but we chose to have some privacy for the time being. 
being. Now, as for Kanye's extended family, well, considering the fact that Bianca could almost be considered a carbon copy of his former wife, Kim Kardashian, well, feelings are a bit more complicated. Now, a few days after the news of the marriage broke, well, a source told Page Six that Kim, she hates Bianca because of how pretty she is. That being said, well, Kim, she did take a moment to respond to the news with a series of cryptic thoughts that she later deleted from Instagram. She referenced being in her quiet girl era and how the black sheep of the family usually turns into the goat. Even more strangely, well, neither Bianca or Kanye have ever spoken publicly about this relationship, despite being seen out and about with one another all the time. But it's not images of these two together that have recently broken the internet, no. Bianca has somehow managed to do that all by herself. Outside of being an architect and the new Mrs. West, well, Bianca Sensuri is also stretching her wings by stepping into the fashion world by modeling a new clothing line. And I'm using the term clothing here very loosely. <laughs> oh, God. Bianca shocked millions of people across the globe when she appeared in a risque outfit designed by former Yeezy employee Moalau Ogunelasi. Now, over on Moalau Lau's Instagram page, well, Bianca, she was seen wearing black thigh high heels alongside black body tape in the shape of a cross that covers up all the interesting bits. And fans, well, they had thoughts like, uh, well, those who were left wondering why Bianca resembled a virtual avatar from Sims more than a living, breathing human being. <laughs> now, another critic was curious as to where the actual fashion came into the design. After all, it looks less like an outfit and more like a potentially painful Brazilian wax, basically brought to life. Now, it may not be the most well thought out fashion reveal that I've ever seen, but I'll give Bianca credit that she's certainly not being shy. Now, with all the complicated feelings that Ye elicits out of seemingly everyone these days, well, since the announcement of their union, well, Bianca's actually shut down all of her social media accounts. Now, considering the former allegations of manipulation and control that have been lobbed in Kanye's way, well, that's not exactly a reassuring look. But until we know where, how, and far this relationship goes, well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see if Bianca Sensori is really the woman Ye has been waiting for his entire life. All right, guys, thank you so much for uh, checking out our latest episode of Before They Are Famous. Before I leave you guys, I do have a question for you. Do you think Ye has finally found the true love, or is Bianca just another way for him to keep his name in the headlines? You sound off in the comments down below. It might have been better if she was Jewish, right? Anyways, guys, that concludes this episode of Before They Are Famous. And before I leave you guys, we've been tagging on a previous upload to the end of our latest. So I'm going to leave you with uh, uh, Kanye West, Before They Are Famous. I'm sure I've made a bunch of these over the years, but enjoy it. I'll see you guys in another video or that one or that. Yeah, probably. Right. Okay. Yeah. And thanks to 441. I don't know. Appreciate the new swag. All right. I've been blessed to know Kanye West before he became the Kanye West. He definitely gave me that confidence to follow my heart and follow my creative path. Certain songs that he did, people scared to even do it, so. He gonna look monster. He did a whole show with a mask on. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Loves comparing himself to people. I am Warhol. Kanye West unveiled his new clothing line. I am Shakespeare in the flesh. People just can't seem to stop talking about Kanye West. I am the most impactful artist of our generation. Ten Day and Acid Rap were inspired by Kanye. Get, Get off the property! Get Every off. single headline on the news today is about something that Kanye said, something he did, something he tweeted, something he ranted about. George Bush doesn't care about black people. When you hear about slavery for 400 years, for 400 years? That sounds like a choice. Everybody says, who does he think he is? Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. This is crazy. I just told you who I thought I was. A guy. You could tell that he was going to be a star. I love Kanye. I think he's like the, the best. He's like a prophet. He's like he pushing. He makes people want to be better. Kanye is adopting and endorsing our platform. Kanye paying the fine off essentially removed any barrier from me being able to make the ballot. You ain't got the answers. You ain't got the answers, Sway. Hey, good morning, Kanye. If you guys like that epic intro, let us know by hitting that like button right now. Now, Kanye West, he is undoubtedly one of the most influential artists of his generation. From his genre-defying bodies of work to his signature fashion lines, there's no denying Mr. West's creative impact on the world. Now, everything he set his mind to accomplish, well, Kanye's done it. He originally wanted to be the biggest producer in the world. He did that. Next, he wanted to be the biggest rapper in the world. He did that too. Then he wanted to be one of the biggest names in the world of fashion. He checked that off the list as well. And then he wanted for himself a Kardashian. And that just seemed easy as pie. She dumped the last guy got with him and they're madly in love. 
But Kanye's career has been one of the most polarizing journeys that we've ever witnessed. Now the name Kanye West, it's been synonymous with controversy basically since he started out in the game. But one thing is for sure, whether you love him or you hate him, you feel something about him. And not many people have that impact on the world quite like Kanye West. What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael McCrudden and in this video we're gonna take you through the life and career of Kanye West one last time. We're gonna go into his early years he spent in China with his mom to the car accident that almost took his life in Los Angeles because this here is our epic version of Before They Are Famous. Now of course we've done other videos here on this channel. We recently dropped one on Drake, we did one on Post Malone, we've done Ariana Grande and Beyonce and Cardi B in the past, but you guys gotta let us know who deserves an epic in the comments down below. All right, without further ado, let's get into good old Kanye West. Kanye Omari West was born on June 8, 1977 in Atlanta, Georgia to Donda and Ray West. Now the two, they met at Spelman College in Atlanta where Ray was hired as a freelance photographer by a director of public relations and Donda, well she was working in the public relations department while studying for her master's degree at Atlanta University. Ray West is a former Black Panther member and one of the first black photojournalists at the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. He also holds two degrees. Now the two were married three months after they started dating. At first, neither one of them, they wanted to have children, but three years into their marriage, well Donda said that she felt the spirit of God gave them Kanye. Now although Kanye, he originally thought that his parents divorced when he was three years old, he revealed in his David Letterman interview that the divorce may have been finalized when he was three but they were basically separated when Kanye was just a baby. Now Ray, he was originally a great husband and a father, but once his photography business started to grow, well that became his first priority. And Donda, well, she decided that she didn't want to come second to no man, to no business, to nothing. Now him and his mother, they moved to Chicago together when Kanye was just three years old. Now Donna, she was an English professor beginning her career at Morris Brown College in Atlanta, but later working at Chicago State University. She also became the head of the English department there. Now even though money was tight as a single mom, well she always managed to provide her son with a good life, buying a house on South Shore Drive where her and Kanye lived for eight years. From a young age, Donna, she taught Kanye that he could always speak his mind, something that well, you know, he's, he certainly hasn't shied away from. The destruction of the spirit of the people of southern Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Please call. His mother Donna, she stated in her memoir, There is no room for shyness. I raised him that way to think critically and analytically and not be afraid to voice what you feel. I help shape that. I think leaders are people who must do that. Every summer though, Kanye, he would stay with his father in the DC area. And like he says on the song Champion, we were kind of like Will Smith and his son in the movies. I ain't talking about the rich one. Looks like they had a little pursuit of happiness going on. Now while he didn't know exactly what his dad was doing for dough, he would always send his kid back to school with a new wardrobe. Now Kanye, he was an extremely gifted child, especially artistically. He would make his own toys and draw elaborate pictures when he was just three years old. Now his work with crayons was more impressive than a lot of kids who were twice his age at the time. He would also experiment with colors, drawing things like purple bananas and blue oranges. Always wanted to be, you know, the original guy in the group, standing out from a crowd. Now yay, he was enrolled at professional playhouse preschool before attending preschool at his mom's workplace. Now his teachers described the young Kanye as academically gifted, but said that socially, he was self-absorbed and didn't work well with others. He attended kindergarten at the Vander Poet Magnet School in Chicago, and when he was 10, Kanye and Donda, well they spent a year in China after his mother was selected through a Fulbright scholarship program to be a foreign expert to the People's Republic of China. Now Kanye, he was placed in the third grade in China because of the language barrier, even though at that time, well he would have been in the fifth grade back home. But he did have a private tutor from Zimbabwe to help him keep up with the fifth grade curriculum for when he returned back home. Now yay, he got along with the new classmates, but there was one incident where Donda, she recalls Kanye getting in trouble with his teacher. Now all the students, they had to have finger holes on their gloves in the winter, but Kanye being passionate about fashion even as a kid, well he refused to take off his gloves that had no finger holes. Now the teacher sat him down and called Donda about his disobedience. Kanye learned pretty quickly in China that it was disrespectful to look his superiors in the eyes when speaking to them. 
Now Kanye, he was also a good break dancer and he would charge Chinese students money to watch him dance, which he would then spend on street food. You gotta respect that hustle. Now eventually Donna, she homeschooled Kanye for the rest of their year in China. Outside of his schooling, he took Tai Chi lessons and private art lessons twice a week. When he returned back home, Kanye was feeling particularly inspired and began to work on one of his original dreams, which was to design video games, believe it or not. That led him to loving the sound creation for the scores of games. Now from there, he began to work on music constantly, and Kanye, he spent all of his time practicing. Now the first song his mom remembers him writing was called Green Eggs and Ham. You know, probably inspired by Dr. Seuss. Now his first recording was at a basement studio in Chicago that charged $25 an hour. Now Kanye, he thought that at 13 years old, he would get signed to become a star. He even told his gym teacher that he wasn't coming to class because he was going to get signed. But you know, as we all know now, well that didn't happen right away. Although these days they're scooping them up mad young. But still, Kanye, he had to wait. Now Donna, she also believed in Kanye and helped fund his dream. Now his dream was to become a rapper, so in order to have something to rap over, well he would make his own beats. When Kanye was 14 years old, he got his first sampling keyboard after saving up some money. He also started selling his beats, charging local artists 50 bucks per beat. Like he says on his song, Spaceships, well he was doing five beats a day for three summers long. Ye would work on jobs to save up enough money to keep enhancing his home studio, and before long he had his own mixer, turntables, and drum machine. Friends of his would come over to his home studio to work on their music. Now those friends were part of Kanye's production company called Conman Productions. Now the group had included Mikey Halstead, Rhymefest, and GLC. It was a work colleague of Donda's that would help introduce Kanye to one of his most influential mentors. Now Donda, she worked with the mother of a local producing legend. His name was No ID, and he was working with Common at the time. Donda convinced No ID's mom to put in a good word for her son, and before long, well, No ID, he was giving production lessons to a hungry Kanye West. No ID, he taught Kanye about how to speed up his samples, leading to his later signature production sound. Now Common, he even remembers Kanye challenging him to freestyle battles. So with newfound skills, advice from his mentor, and inspiration from Common, well yay, yeah, he was ready for the next chapter of his musical life. But school was put in second place to his musical career, and Kanye's former honor roll grades, they started slipping. With some encouragement from his mother, well he graduated from Polara School in the spring of 1995. Now in an unlikely turn of events though, yay, yeah, he decided to attend Chicago State University where he was majoring in English. And if you know anything about Kanye's career, then you know what happened next. Kanye became a college dropout and focused solely on his music career. But before gaining any real success as a rapper, it was his producing skills that landed him some major placements. Now after creating his signature sound flipping soul samples, he began producing beats for local Chicago acts. He had a small apartment in Chicago where he would stay inside and make beats from. Now he was selling enough beats to keep the lights on and buy himself the occasional pair of Jordans. Now he also became a ghost producer for a rapper named D-Dot, which was actually a pretty good look for him at the time. But his dream of becoming a rapper himself, it was never lost on him. Now he is part of a rap group called The Go-Getters, and they were managed by John Monopoly, Don Crowley, and Arrow Star. And that was under the management firm called Hustle Period. Now the Go-Getters, they did a short promo run, and they released an album called World Record Holders. I was always the weakest rapper out of the people in the group, you know what I'm saying? It would always be like somebody who really had it, but they just didn't have a passion for it. Yeah, none of this information was ever in our original before they were famous. We'd be dug in extra deep in these epics. Duggan? You know what I mean. But his production credits on big name albums are what started getting Mr. West some notoriety. He was featured as a producer on albums for Foxy Brown and Goody Mop. But of course, the biggest moment in his career came when he began producing for artists on Rockefeller Records. I was always rapping. And it just so happened that really, really phenomenal rappers got to rap on my beats before I got a chance to. The next part of Kanye's journey is based on the story that he told in the outro of his song, Last Call. According to Ye and a and at Rockefeller Records named Hip Hop, well he wanted to use one of Kanye's beats for their artist Beanie Siegel. Now Kanye, he would send in beats for his artist to use. Hip Hop was friends with No ID, who advised him that if you want Kanye to send you more beats, you gotta pump his tires a bit about the way he raps. So Hip Hop said he would manage Kanye as a producer and as a rapper also. 
Now finally, one day Hip Hop told Kanye that he liked one of his beats so much that Jay-Z might want to rap on it. Now that song, it ended up becoming This Can't Be Life. He met Jay-Z at the studio after he recorded the song and Kanye rapped for Jay that day, but nothing came of it just yet. So even after having a beat on Jay-Z's project, well, Kanye was still living in a small apartment without much else happening for him musically. One of the artists from his production company got signed, but Kanye, it looked like he was being left behind. Now at the same time, Kanye, he got evicted from his apartment and he was unable to pay the rent. So Donda and Kanye, well, they moved to Newark, New Jersey with all of Ye's recording equipment. The first beat he made in his new apartment was Heart of the City. Now Kanye was playing beats for Beanie at a studio session, but he had already finished his album and wasn't looking for any more beats. Then Jay-Z walked in and heard Heart of the City. So he played another beat and another one, and Jay-Z, well man, oh man, oh man, was he impressed. <laughs> I made that, that was awkward. Now those beats, they ended up being some of Jay's biggest songs on his album, The Blueprint. And from there, well Kanye, the producer, was on. But his career as a rapper, well, it still had a long way to go. Yeah, we're not there yet. Kanye continued to produce for Jay-Z and other major artists. Then after leaving a hangout with some other artists, which included Ludacris, around 3 a.m. while driving in his rented Lexus, well Kanye, he was cut off and ran head on into traffic. He collided with another car just a couple blocks away from the W Hotel. This was on October 23rd of 2002. Now MTV reported that Kanye West had been injured in a car accident, and uh, well, a lot of people didn't know him yet, but those who did, they were very worried. In an interview when speaking on the night, he said, when I had my accident, I was working on Beanie Siegel, Black Eyed Peas, and PD Crack. And let's just say that those tracks were not my best work. If I would have passed that night, that would have been the end of my legacy. Now when I go into the studio, I act like this could possibly be my last day. Now Kanye, he had to have reconstructive surgery on his face and his jaw was wired shut. With no health insurance, he was paying for everything out of pocket. But that accident would also serve as inspiration for one of Kanye's most important songs. Now Kanye wrote and rapped his song through the wire just weeks after the accident. And he rapped the whole thing with his jaw wired shut. Now the song later became the first single off his debut album. Now after finally convincing some label reps that he was more than just a producer, well he had a deal with Capitol on the table. But Capitol, they backed out. Eventually Kanye West, he signed with Rockefeller Records and released his debut album, The College Dropout. The second single off the album was Slow Jams, which featured Twista and Jamie Foxx. That song became all three musicians' number one hit. But at first, Jamie Foxx, he wasn't so sure about this Kanye guy. He told a story in an interview with The Cruise Show about how the song came about. And then finally, I throw this party and a kid walks in, backpack on, jaw a little swollen. Who is it? Kanye, Kanye West. Kanye, Kanye West. Wow. Kanye told Jamie that he had a song for him to get on. And to keep in mind, at this point, Kanye, well, he was only known as a producer for Jay's work. So we go in the back. So in the studio, he says the song go like this. She says she wants some Marvin Gaye, some, some Luther, Luther Vandross, a little. I say I got it, oh Kanye. Who doesn't anybody know yet? <laughs> Jamie sung that part, but Kanye, he still wasn't feeling it. Yeah, he went. Uh, uh, don't do that. <laughs> wow. So Jamie forgot about the song and forgot about Kanye and thought nothing more of it. He went on to do a bad movie. His words, not mine. And then, <laughs> so so I come back and they say, you remember that song you said was what? It's number one. And as for the college dropout, well, the album ended up winning a Grammy for Best Rap Album. Mm, beautiful stuff. Everybody wants to know what I would do if I didn't win. I guess we'll never know. Kanye's career after that is one of the most impressive and impactful runs in music history. And while we could do a separate video for each of his classic albums and moments to come, I think uh, I think we've done this story justice. I think we've told it the best way we can. I think we're gonna wrap it up here because this is before they are famous. Epic style. All right guys, we put a lot of extra work into these epic videos. We hope you enjoy them as much as we enjoy telling them. Be sure to share these with a Kanye West fan. I'm sure there's something in here for everyone to you know, maybe they've heard it before, but they never heard it like this, or or maybe they don't know some of this stuff. They're like, I had no idea he knew Common. Who knows? Anyways, guys, uh, share these videos, hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. My name, of course, is Michael McCrudden, the Before They're Famous Guy, the Fact God, and uh, 
Well, maybe send this to Kanye. Let's try that. Let's let's go over to Twitter, send it to Ye, and see what he has to say. I'm sure he'll love it. All right, I'm done. Bye. Boom.